Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have camping Dollar Tree DIYs for you. Lots of fun decor ideas, a few hacks, and even a camping tear tray today. So let's get started with our first camping DIY. I just picked up this little camper 4th of July sign at Dollar Tree. I notice a lot of my Dollar Trees still have a little bit of 4th of July stuff left but I think they have these for a lot of seasons, so you might just have one already too. Um, I want to save the little galvanized metal door on here because that's super cute, but I thought we could remake this little camper and make it really cute. I want like lots of soft colors and textures and stuff on there to really make this like, you know, old fashioned camper special. So. That was really glued on there. They used a ton of hot glue, maybe because it's metal. Um, so I'm going to use some thick things to cover it. So it doesn't really matter that there's kind of a glue mess left behind. If you're using like thinner paper, you might want to cover the back of this instead. But I'm going to use thick things like this little hand towel from the Dollar Tree. It is like a mint green color, um, like a light blue and kind of, you know, that pretty beachy color I like, but I think it's great for camping too, because it's kind of a little bit more green, I guess. And I thought I would cover the top part of the camper with that, where it is like blue right now. So I'm just gonna lay this out. It's plenty big enough between the little stripes on the hand towel. I don't really wanna include those in the design, so I put little lines on the back of my camper so I could line that up perfectly and then just draw that on the back with a fine tip Sharpie so I'll know where to cut that out. And I just simply cut that. I left the seam there on the side because I thought that would be a nice transition between the top and the bottom of the camper. So I just cut that piece out. It's a little wrinkled, but I think once I glue it down, it will be fine. So that's half my camper. I think that's gonna provide like lots of great texture. Then I thought I'd use one of these Dollar Tree burlap bags for the bottom part. It's not quite big enough, but we're gonna make it work. So I'm gonna kind of cut around the sides so I have that whole panel and also remove the straps because I'm gonna need every bit of this. I didn't really want to damage the burlap, so I just cut the strings just to cut the straps off. And this won't fit like straight across on here. Um, it's not large enough, but if I get creative and like turn it like this maybe, it will cover the bottom half. But as you can see, even though that's coated with like a plastic coating on the back of that burlap, you can still kind of see through it. So I will have to paint the camper first so that you won't be able to see that through it. So I just sit that on the inside and um, just again, using a Sharpie, kind of draw the shape of the camper where I need to cut that out. And as you can see, I'm using every bit, <laughs> every single bit of this burlap. You could also do this with burlap. I really like crafting with these bags though, because it's like this finished burlap um, there's like no fraying. It's super easy to cut and DIY with. And it looks nice too. So I cut out the bottom section. I don't want the tire to be covered in burlap. So I just cut that part off when I was cutting the little piece out. And now I need to cut out like the entire area where there's a tire. Since I can see through it, I'm just gonna use a Sharpie, kind of draw where that tire is and then just kind of cut on the outside of that to try to cut all of that part off. So we have like the little um, mint green towel for the top, the burlap for the bottom, but again, you could see through the burlap. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a coat of white acrylic over everything. Um, I'm not too worried about that hot glue and stuff that's left on there from before. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it in the end, since I'm covering it with some nice thick fabrics. 
So once I paint that white, I do kind of need to go back and paint my tire back on. And so I just use a black paint pen and you can kind of tell where it used to be. And I'm just gonna draw my black tire back on there. Um, I didn't really mind the way it was before. It did have glitter in the middle though, and I really don't want any glitter at all on here. So I just paint that over and I will cover that part of the tire later with something else. Just touching up the little hitch trailer and the tire again with some black. And then I go over the bottom half of the camper with a rather thick layer of Mod Podge. We're gonna stick on that burlap from the burlap bag. And if you've ever worked that burlap before, it has like a plastic coating on the inside. So I think I need quite a bit, but it kind of helps because it doesn't really soak through the burlap. And so you don't really get any like glue stains or anything like that on the cloth of the burlap. My tire was a little small, so I'm gonna touch that up a little bit. And then we can attach the towel here to the top part. And I love these colors together. They're very soft. Um, I think they go with camping, but they also match my like coastal farmhouse decor in my house. This is nice and thick, so I can use hot glue on this for sure. And so I just do like three rows of hot glue and I'm gonna overlap that on the burlap since I have that nice straight seam from the edge of the little hand towel. So I get that on there, just smooth that out. It glued down great. It didn't soak through at all the fabric. And now we can add like some details to make this look like a camper again. I'm gonna make this a hanging sign, but this would be a great like stand up sign as well for your decor. This would be really cute to decorate a camper with too. I'm gonna glue back on the little galvanized metal door that was on there before kind of like right about here. That way the entire window will be that um, bluish green color. And that's about where the door of the camper would go. Be careful if you're using hot glue though, because that metal does get hot. For the window, I'm gonna use just one of those little wood dominoes from the Dollar Tree. They have a great wood back on them. And I am just gonna stain mine with some Antique Wax by Waverly. Kind of give it a natural look rather than leaving it. I don't want like really any bright colors on this. I really want like lots of greens and browns and metal. And then I'm gonna just use my white paint pen just to kind of draw on the window on there so you can kind of tell what it's supposed to be. So I just draw like a rectangle for the window and then kind of make it like a little sliding glass window maybe like that. And then to kind of give the illusion that it's glass, I'm gonna do just some straight lines, little glass lines on there, just to give it a little bit of detail. And then I'm just gonna attach the little domino right about here to give it a window. And you can use, you know, like a ruler or any kind of a wood cut down small enough for that. But I thought the little domino was the perfect size. It's looking really cute. I didn't really like the glitter on the tire. So I thought I would use like one of these little circle puzzle pieces from this little puzzle from the toy aisle at the Dollar Tree. I like to pick these up for the shapes because you can use them for crafting a lot. This one's green and I kind of want it to be more of the color of the towel that we used. So I'm gonna mix a couple of colors together to get that. Um, I think I mixed cloudless together with like an ivory color. I just kind of want like a very soft, like mint green color. And I just paint the top and the sides of that. And it's small enough, I think I can put that on for like a hubcap on the side of the tire. And I'm just gonna attach that with hot glue over that little glitter area there and kind of center that on my tire. Once I got it on there, I decided I kinda wanted it to be distressed a little bit. And so I'm just gonna use a dry chunky brush and a very light distressing with some antique wax by Waverly. Kinda give it a weathered look. And this camper is looking so cute. I thought that I would just make this a hanging sign. They had it stapled on the back before, so I'm gonna kinda do the same thing. I just knot some Dollar Tree twine and staple it kind of about the same area that they had it. You could also add, you know, some blocks to the back of this if you wanted to stain yours up. It'd be super cute either way. And just trimming that off on the back. 
It's a nice thick sign, um, this camper from the 4th of July aisle at Dollar Tree. So it's great for because you can staple all the way through it and not worry about going all the way through like on the thin signs. Now I thought the perfect final touch for a little camper would be a little pennant banner. And so I decided to use um, some of the scrap burlap from that bag that we cut down to cover the camper. And so I just cut a strip of that and then just go back and forth cutting little tiny triangles out and we can make a little tiny pennant banner. So easy, but I think it's going to add the perfect final touch to this summer camper DIY. And I was inspired to do a camping video because we're actually going camping this week. So I think that's super exciting. So I thought I should decorate for it, right? Um, I do like to decorate around the campsite. We are tent campers um, and we like to rough it. Well, we don't have a camper. Otherwise we would probably be <laughs> camper campers. But um, I do like to decorate my campsite a little bit, but I also like to try to pack light and keep it practical. But you know, you know, I can't resist. And I am actually gonna do a couple of little Dollar Tree hacks today for things that we're gonna take on our camping trip. So I just hot glued all of the little pieces of burlap, the little pennants, just to some Dollar Tree twine. I like to do odd numbers, so I did like a total of five, and I'm just gonna drape it over the top of the camper like this. And then just attach the twine to the back with a little bit of hot glue, let it dangle down. They don't all wanna go the right direction, so I do glue one of them down, but otherwise I just kinda leave it like kind of free hanging. Um, to give it that little pennant banner effect. Isn't this adorable? I think it looks so much cuter than it did before. And I'm so glad that I decided to DIY my own little camper. I'm going to show you what it looks like hanging up. This is how it looks hanging up. This would be really cute hanging in a camper, wouldn't it? If you knew somebody that had a camper, this would be a great gift idea as well, I think. Or you could decorate your own with it. Or I'm just going to use mine to decorate for summertime. You know, we have this period here between 4th and July and fall. I need a little decor in my entryway. And look how cute it is if you kind of display it with one of those little Dollar Tree black lanterns. So fun. Okay, next DIY, I picked up one of these just blank wood signs from the Dollar Tree. And I don't like the way they put the hangers on these. I find that they don't hang well against the wall. So... That's the first thing I'm gonna do is just use some twine and string this through, tie it in the front. I always like doing all of my Dollar Tree signs that way. They just hang so much flatter against the wall. Now using this super thin twine from the Dollar Tree is easier to get it through those holes, but as you can see, I think I had to tie it like three or four times to kind of make like the knot big enough so it doesn't fall through the hole. So it's easier to get through there, but you have to tie it a lot. But we have a new hanger. The only other thing I don't like about these signs is they don't really put them together right. Like they have staples on them, but they don't staple their corners and all of the wood comes free on the corners and I think it makes them look cheap. So the first thing I always do with these signs from the Dollar Tree is re-staple the corners. Just using my staple gun and the frame on it is like kind of an unfinished wood, even though it has that great wood on the back. I'm gonna kind of leave it because I think it kind of goes with the vibe of this DIY. And then I made this printable and I will share the link below so you can print this yourself. And it's a great watercolor of a camping scene. So I printed it as large as my printer would print just on regular copy printer paper. Um, mine won't do like the borderless on the eight and a half by 11 size, but it gets pretty close. So. When I cut it down, it's a little bit smaller than the frame itself, but I think we're gonna be able to make it work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cover the back of this Dollar Tree sign with a thin layer of this matte Mod Podge. I wanna make sure I get good coverage everywhere so none of this comes up. And then I'm gonna take the printable. I put like a blue sky background on the back of it, so it's really nice. The colors really go well with that camper that we just made. And then I just smooth it all out, making sure my fingers are super dry. I don't want to rip anything. The paper is, you know, relatively thin, um, just regular copy paper. And as you can see, there is a small border around the edges, but I will show you how I fill that up later. But it, 
that doesn't really bother me anyway. But I did have a few bubbles, so I'm just carefully trying to use my scraper to get rid of those. And then I use my dryer to make sure it's nice and dry. Then we're gonna go over the top of it with more Mod Podge. Um, I try to go in one direction and in the end, I found like the texture of the Mod Podge really made this look like a painting. It looks so cute and high end. And I just printed this on my printer and put this on a $1.25 sign. So I think this was a really a great deal. Now, once I get it on there, I found that the edges didn't seem like they were sealed too well. So I'm gonna go back in with one more coat of Mod Podge. I don't think you can kind of do too much on that. It's just gonna seal your project more and kind of give it more of that painting feel versus just printed paper. Now I did have that little, you know, um, part of the sign that you could still see the back of it, which is fine, but I decided to go in with some of this Dollar Tree like macrame cord. I'm um, just a very thin white rope and just hot glue that to the edges. And I'm just gonna go around and do that on all four sides. Easy peasy, it's gonna cover up that gap and make it look uniform. If you had the same sign and you had like a printer that will do borderless, like the eight and a half um, by eight and a half um, on this, then you might not need to do this step but it's just a way that you can fill that in. And I think this turned out so cute. It was so easy to make. You can use this for a de summer decoration for your home, which is what I'm gonna do. Or you could even use this to decorate your campsite, which I like to, whenever um, I like camp during holidays, I always do a lot of seasonal decor in my campsites. It's so fun to decorate outside. And this is how it turned out. Our little camping scene. I love it. I'm glad my tent is not quite like that one, <laughs> but I am staying in a tent this week. So here it is. So you can see that beautiful texture on there that the Mod Podge gives this. And the colors on this watercolor design are so cute. And it really reminds me of camping. What do you guys think about this little camping canvas? And I will share the link below so you can print this and make it yourself. Okay, the next DIY is actually, I guess, a Dollar Tree hack. I'm gonna take one of these little cake holders from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use it for camping this week. Of course, I wanna decorate it a little bit, but I'm just gonna go ahead and take the top of it off and just decorate the sides. What I wanna do is use this to make like a paper plate and napkin holder for my campsite. But I want it to be cute, right? So I cut out these designs just in some green Cricut vinyl. And I wanted to do like camping things. So I did like a couple of campers and I did a tent. I tried to do a campfire too, but the campfire was just like really hard to weed. And so it was kind of um, a fail on this one, but I actually save it and use it on my next DIY, you'll see. So I got two campers, two tents, um, and I will share this cut file for you as well if you would like to recreate this um, for on a Cricut. And then I also did the words plates and napkins in the skinny font. And um, I think that I like my things to be decorative, but sometimes people aren't gonna know what's in there. So I thought I would label it too. I thought that would be cute. So I have plenty of room to decorate on this. I have all the sides of that little cake cake holder and the top. So I start with my paper transfer paper, which I get on Amazon. I love this stuff. And you'll see how easy it is to reuse this too. I'm gonna reuse that same piece on all of these. So I just put my little tent over here. I think I did about a three inch height on these pieces to make sure I had plenty of room to fit them on there. And I just chose green because I thought that would be a nice camping color, but you know, you could do this in any color that you wanted. And so I have two tents. You can see the little campfires there too. And then I'm gonna do one tent on each side. They're pretty big. So I think four is definitely gonna be enough to fill these up. And as you can see, I'm reusing that same paper transfer paper on all of these and it works great. The reason I chose these images, kind of like the skinny cutout like that, is I thought it would look better on the plastic, less chance of vinyl bubbling and stuff like that. 
And I think it's going to stay on better around the campsite. It's going to be hot. It's going to be warm. Now for the plates and napkins, I am just going to put that piece um, of vinyl here on the top. So everybody will know what's in here. Even though it's clear, it's kind of frosted. Might not be obvious. And I think the great thing about this is my plates and napkins are going to stay clean while I'm camping. And they're also not going to blow away and it's going to keep them really organized. That's the one thing about camping. I really like to be really organized. It makes a huge difference in your camping experience. So this is how it's going to go together. This is how all the little campers and tents look on the side. And I actually picked up paper plates and napkins at the Dollar Tree. They are a great resource for all camping supplies, right? And so I, they'll even fit these big ones. These are like the larger size plates. So I picked up a couple packages of those. And then I got some of the red and white gingham napkins. That really reminds me of camping and a picnic. And I also get a tablecloth like that for the picnic table. And then you just put, put it on and you close these little clamps on the side and it's secure. Your plates are the napkins are clean um, and ready for camping. And you can just sit this on your picnic table or transport it back and forth with that cute little handle on the top. And this is how it turned out. So this is a really fun little camping Dollar Tree hack, I guess. And you can see I got the tablecloth to match. So I think that'll look great with those napkins because of course we have to decorate even more outside, right? And then I told you I had that fire that didn't really weed right. Some of the pieces are kind of missing on there, but that's okay. I thought I would take one of these little plastic containers also from like the kitchen aisle at Dollar Tree. And I thought this would be great to put like my plastic silverware in. Kind of the same thing, a way to keep it organized, way to keep it clean. And so I just put my little campfire um, Cricut cutout um, on the top of the lid just for a little bit of decor there. Again, this design just did not want to weed well for me. Um, but then I just take plastic silverware, fill this up. It's, it could be a little taller, um, but if you rearrange them in there a little bit, you're gonna be able to make it work. You just need it to be enough to get your lid screwed on there properly. So this was just a very simple little Dollar Tree hack, but I thought I would include it anyway, since it was kind of similar to um, the last DIY, and I'm gonna have these two things together. And this is the two quart eight cup container from the Dollar Tree. Now we've had um, Dollar Tree, you know, camping decor DIYs. I had a couple of Dollar Tree, you know, camping hacks. And now we're gonna get into a camping tear tray. This tear tray was so fun to put together and I think you're really going to enjoy it. So I start with just a couple of fairy garden items. I found a little campfire. I found a pile of logs. And those are from the fairy garden section at Dollar Tree and a wood oval from the crafter square at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use a hot dog stick from the Dollar Tree as a dowel, I'm gonna cut that down. And what I wanna do is make a little tent. So I'm gonna use my miter scissors and just start cutting this down. I want to make some um, tent poles so we can make a little campsite for a camping tear tray. And this DIY turned out so cute. And just a few items from the Dollar Tree to pull this together. So I need like four, you know, two for the front, two for the back. And then I also need one for the top so I can build a structure of just like a classic tent. So I start by gluing two together and then I do the same thing for the other two. That's gonna be the front and the back. And then to reinforce that, I took some Dollar Tree twine and I'm wrapping that around kind of while the hot glue was still wet. I wrap it around and then I go over and tie it off again. That way I'm kind of tying and gluing it together at the same time to give it a little bit of structure, but it's also really easy. So I do the same thing here with the second one. I tie them together and then I go over and under and tie them that direction too. 
just and just what you want to do is just get it secure. So I want them about the same front and back like that. And I thought we could have a little tent right over here. Campfire, a pile of logs. And then this pole is going to be the top of the tent. So I just attach it to that twine with hot glue, hold that in place, and then put the other side on gluing to the twine as well. And this is a step you're just gonna have to let that dry a little bit to get some stability but it really doesn't have to be too stable. I did add a little extra hot glue to the top to kind of help it out. Now for the fabric, I picked up this tan fabric from the Crafter Square, and I thought this would be perfect for like a little canvas looking tent. And so we're gonna use that structure that we just built with this fabric and build a little tent ourselves. So I just cut out a little square on that fabric like that, and I want it to be about the same length as the tent. And I had it kind of folded up together. I just kind of cut it on the edge. That way I can have a piece that can go over the entire top from both sides of the tent. And I put a bead of hot glue on the top of our tent structure and just lay the little tan fabric right on top, gluing that down. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here on both sides, just gluing to that dowel as well with the fabric on the side, trying not to burn myself. It's okay if the fabric kind of looks a little wrinkled or crazy because it's gonna give you more of that tent, I think, like appearance, kind of like a canvas tent you'd see like in Boy Scouts or something like that. And I do that on both sides. So we have the sides of our tent. Now we still need to build the rest of the tent out. So I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. My fabric was a little bit longer than I needed. I don't really want that like overlapping on the ground. And now it's time to make some little tent doors. So I cut down like just a little rectangle here of fabric. I'm going to glue that on where it has like an opening there for the doorway. So I kind of glue it on at an angle like that. And then um, I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side to make little tent flaps here in front. Once I got that glued on and it was dry, I cut off the excess fabric that I don't need there over on the sides. It's gonna be a very quick no sew little tent, but it turned out just so cute. Now I kind of pulled back the fabric a little bit to kind of make it look like it was opening itself a little bit and just kind of hot glued it to itself. And then I'm gonna glue my second little tent flap here on the other side, trimming that down, kind of attaching them maybe at the tip and cutting a little opening there so we have a little doorway. And I'm gonna have that one kind of look like it is kind of folding open too just to make it sit right. Then I just need to cover the back of the tent too. I just need a back so I can just do one piece for that. Doesn't need to have any openings the back of the tent here. So I just hot glue it on and then trim it down to size. I found that that was the easiest way to do this. That way you'll get like a perfect size cut and size of your canvas. And we have a little tent. It wasn't that easy to do. And so I wanted to do like a little campsite scene with this now that we have the little tent constructed. So to start with, I'm gonna use some reindeer moss and I'm just gonna hot glue that all over just one of these like wood ovals from the Dollar Tree to kind of give me like a grass or um, a, you know, a green floor for our campsite. And I kind of want to just cover all of the wood. So anywhere you're going to see that, I'm going to put a little hot glue and a little bit more of the reindeer moss until you can't see any of the bottom. Now, it kind of looks crazy right now, but you can always trim yours up with a pair of scissors to kind of give it back its shape a little bit. And now it's time to put our little camp scene together. I'm going to glue down the little um, post to my tent to the reindeer moss and the sign underneath of it there to kind of make our little tent stay in place. And you know, you don't have to use this on a tear tray. This would be a great decor piece anywhere, it's so cute. And then I have my logs and my little campfire 
from the fairy garden section at Dollar Tree. I love making things with these little miniature items. They're so cute. And I just hot glue those down to the reindeer moss and the wood sign as well. Making sure I use enough hot glue and push it, you know, kind of hard enough that it's gonna make contact with that wood underneath. And we have our first item for the tear tray, a little camping scene. Then I thought, you know what? Nobody wants to camp like right on the grass. <laughs> and so I'm gonna use that same fabric and just cut a little floor to my tent. I didn't wait make one before, but I think it kind of needs one. So I just cut a little rectangle down and just kind of put it in there on the bottom of the tent and just use some hot glue to kind of attach that down. So when you look in there, it looks like a proper tent now. And I think it's perfect. What do you guys think about this little campsite? It's so cute and making the little tent was so fun. And I'll show you how I put this camping tear tray together as well. This one, I put it on a wood block with a little bit of hot glue so it could stand up tall. And you could see it over the sides of my tear tray because it's kind of my large tear tray that I'm decorating today, the galvanized metal one with the edges. Okay, next DIY, I picked up one of these little bright pink plastic barbecue grills from the toy aisle at Dollar Tree. And I thought we can make a little miniature barbecue grill for our camping tear tray. Right now, it definitely looks like a toy, but you know what? We are gonna make it look really good. So the first thing I wanna do, I kinda want mine to be like a, um, a silver, like metallic grill. So I started off with like some silver acrylic paint and I decided to try to paint it like that. And as you can see, that was not really working. So I actually had some silver metallic paint. Looks like I've had this bottle in my garage forever, but I'm just gonna run outside real quick and give it a quick spray and see if that works better. And oh my, look how cute this looks with a coat of metallic silver spray paint on it. It looks just like a barbecue grill. Now I'm gonna take a little antique wax by Waverly and just stain. I have a piece of wood here left over from one of those craft projects from the Dollar Tree, but you could use any of their craft wood or anything you've got. I like this one because it kind of even looks like decking, right? It's got like the little cutouts in there, but I'm just gonna stain that because I just needed a base, something that I could attach that to because it's plastic. You know, it's kind of flimsy. I need something that is gonna make it stand up on my tear tray and not be falling all over the place. So I just hot glued out our little grill DIY to that little piece of wood. And then there is a grill surface in here. And I found these really cute little camping um, summer stickers at the Dollar Tree. So I thought we could put some food on the grill. They had a few items to choose from on here. They had like some little kebabs. That would be perfect for a camping grill. And then, you know, maybe a little hot dog as well. This one was on a fork, so I just kind of cut that off and put that on there in the back. And I think this is gonna be so fun for our tear tray. It was so easy to do. The spray paint though was definitely the key. My silver acrylic really wasn't cutting it with the plastic. Okay, this next DIY white might be one of my favorites. I'm gonna show you how I took this little wood pallet sign from the Dollar Tree and made it into a miniature little picnic table. So this is the one with the hanger on the side like that, and it's got like five pieces of wood. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take the hanger off, get rid of any um, extra materials that I don't need on there, and then I need to cut it because I wanna make it into a picnic table. So I'm using my miter scissors. They worked, but I can't say it was easy to snip this off. A saw is probably gonna be easier to cut that off. I thought I could just kind of cut in there and eventually I did, but it wasn't super easy, I wouldn't say. But you just need to find some way to cut this off. And I want the top piece and the bottom piece off that way, um, those can be the sides of the picnic table where you can sit. And then the three, uh, three other ones will be the top. So once I got them cut apart, I kind of really just needed to clean up the bottom pieces a little bit. So I just kind of break off the, um, 
little pieces of wood that were still attached with a pair of pliers that does expose like a couple of staples. So I pulled those out as well. And we have kind of the components that we need for a picnic table. So I line up the bench part and then I just have to find a way to put this together. So to start with, I decided popsicle sticks could kind of build the structure here of the seats. And so I used to use a little hot glue and glue the two together having like the little rounded ends of the popsicles like be right under the bench like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here on the other side. Just hot gluing that together. And now at least we have like the bench structure. Then I need the table structure to sit higher. So to do that, I decided to use some of the little mini Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree. And I was just kind of seeing how many I needed and I think two is gonna be enough. And I just glue that onto my popsicle stick, one on top of the other. And it's gonna provide the lift I need for the table part of the picnic table. Or I can just sit it right there. And I glued the popsicle sticks kind of in the same pattern as where the support board is on the top. So they'll be hidden under there and you won't even be able to see it. Now for this piece, I'm taking another Jenga block and I use my miter scissors to kind of cut it at a 45 degree angle so I can make some cute little legs for this. So I'm just cutting the very end off and that's just gonna give me four little legs that are gonna be like flat against the bottom of the seat structure and then go to the ground like that. And you know, you could do that without mitering them, but I had the miter scissors, so I decided I might as well try. And I glue them right about here, one going out each direction to kind of give you that like crisscross legs that a, like a picnic table would have. And I'm gonna do the same thing here over on this side. So basically I'm building all of the structure off of the bench part and then I will just sit the table like on top of that structure. I love building stuff like this from scratch with Dollar Tree supplies. It's so much fun. Now I attach the table with a little bit of hot glue on each one of those Jenga blocks and sit my table right on top. And you can kind of see there how it is constructed. It was really easy to put together and I think it's so cute. It definitely looks like a little picnic table. Now I wanted to stain it, but I didn't want it to be too dark. So I decided to mix water with some antique wax by way really into a very light stain to kind of give me that color of like, you know, fresh wood where somebody just made a picnic table, kind of almost like a yellowish color of wood. And I think that looks pretty good. So this is really watered down, this antique wax by Waverly. And I'm just gonna kind of go over all the surfaces of the picnic table with that. Give it that very light stain. You could leave it like this. It would be super cute to do. Um, I like to use um, tablecloths when I camp on picnic tables and when I'm camping. And so I do make a tablecloth for mine, but it's really cute all on its own and you that's totally optional. So I used a brush so I could kind of get in all over on that. I wanted it to be a finished product, so I kind of stained all of the surfaces, but I think it looks a lot better. Now for the tablecloth, I had like a blue and white like gingham fabric from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna cut a simple little tablecloth. I would really love it if I had this in red. I think that would look even more um, like a picnic scene. But this is how I just made a very simple little tablecloth for this out of some Dollar Tree fabric. And I went back and forth whether I should put a tablecloth on this because it's so cute without it, but I like it both ways. I used a little bit of hot glue to kind of form the sides on that. And so it would kind of stay in place as well. But that I could still remove it and use it for other uses. And I did that here on all four sides to form a little tablecloth. So you'll have to let me know in the comments below, tablecloth or no tablecloth on the picnic table. I couldn't decide. It's so cute though, don't you think? This was one of my favorite camping crafts for sure.
The next item for our camping tear tray is just a little Dollar Tree greenery. It um, comes in a little burlap pot like that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of take mine out like this, um, kind of clean it up a little bit and um, use some Dollar Tree twine. I'm gonna tie it off. What I'm trying to do with this is kind of just make it look like a little tree. <laughs> and so I just wind some Dollar Tree twine along the bottom of it to tie it off. And we have a little tree for our camping seed. Now, I was really lucky and found some really great camping items at Dollar General. This was $3.50 and it is perfect. It says tent grounds, fire pits, fish pond on there. So cute. It's perfect. Now, the next item is from Fairy Garden at Dollar Tree, and it is this little blue camper. Uh, I think they have this in a couple of different styles, and I'm not a big fan of it as is, but I thought we could paint it and make it look super cute. So I'm just using that silver acrylic paint. I think I got this at Target Dollar Spot, but I think they also have it at Dollar General. And I thought we would make this look like a little Airstream trailer, right? So I'm doing that metallic silver all over to give it that silver glow, like a silver camper. And I think this is going to coordinate well with the metallic silver barbecue grill that we did before. Um, so cute. It's just a matter of getting enough of it on there to give it that nice metallic sheen. So I paint, you know, the front, the top and the back with that silver. And then I'm going to go back with a like black Sharpie kind of draw my tire back on there. Sometimes I like to use a Sharpie more than a paint pen because you don't really get like the bleeding. And then I'm also gonna like kind of use that to kind of color in the awning here. I don't want it to be super colorful. That's kind of what I was getting away from on this. Also maybe like the little doorknob and the little window provide a little details, but I don't want it to make it like super colorful or anything to make this cute little camper for our tear tray. Once I got all the details with the Sharpie, I'm also gonna put a wood block on this one as well because I had a feeling it was gonna be hidden on my tear tray, just a way to bump it up. And I just hot glued it on just to make it a little easier. That way it won't fall off, but we have a little tiny Airstream um, camper now. Now the next items we're going to use are these little frogs from the Dollar Tree. They have these in the spring and the summer section at Dollar Tree and they're so cute. I thought they'd be perfect for camping. Um, frogs is always a fun thing to encounter on a camping trip and so I picked up three of them like in all different poses and I thought they'd be super cute to add to this camping theme. Now, the next item is one of these little metal buckets from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. I love crafting with these, they're so cute. And I thought we can do a little bucket of firewood. That'd be perfect for camping. And to do that, I'm gonna use some of these little wood stems from Dollar Tree. I got mine at Goodwill, but they're originally from Dollar Tree. <laughs> and I thought I would just pick out some. That'll look like little logs that are cut down for a campfire. Super easy, just pick out a couple of them and fill the little metal bucket with them. Perfect for a little tear tray miniature. I also found this one at Dollar General National Forest Campground for $3.50 and I had to do a camping tear tray when I found these, they were so cute. This is similar to the one before, but the signs are a little bit different. This one's also from Dollar General and it's gonna go on our tear tray as well. Hey, I'd like to take a minute out of today's video and let you know that I have a private Facebook group. I have the link in the description below. We would love to see you over on Facebook. You'll get alerted when I have new videos come out and you'll also find out what everybody else has been working on. So creative. I also have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Now let's get back to crafting. I'm going to make a little cabin for the camping tear tray out of one of these little wood house shapes from the Dollar Tree. I thought we could make this look like a little log cabin and I think that would be really cute for this. So this is just like a piece of block wood cut into the shape of a house. I also picked up some wood Dollar Tree rulers. I love crafting with these and some popsicle sticks. I thought we could build a little log cabin that was gonna be the perfect size for a tear tray. 
and also a few Jenga blocks as well. So I thought the popsicle sticks would make perfect logs for my log cabin, right? So I decided to cut those pieces down. I'm gonna cut like straight edges and just kind of make it go from one side to the other and just cut enough popsicle sticks to go all the way up our little log cabin. That way it's actually gonna give us the grooves, really give us that appearance of a log cabin. So I need enough pieces to go up the side and then I'll need to start kind of cutting them at an angle for the roof line to fill that part up as well. But I'm also gonna cut a second set of these because I wanna cover the front and the back of it with these to give it that like log cabin feel. So every time I cut a piece, I'm also cutting a second piece for the back because it's gonna be the same size. And scissors and popsicle sticks is actually probably the easiest way to cut these. And I'll finish with a little tiny triangle right there on top. And that was the only one that I kind of found a little bit tricky to cut out because you kind of need it to be a perfect shape. And then I'm just going to start hot gluing that on, leaving a little space in between them to kind of give it that log feel and filling up the entire little house. I am gonna make a window on the other side. So this one's gonna be the back of our little log cabin. And then put together the other side. I do the roof first and then the bottom part. Then when I got to the part where I could have a window, I decided to cut those down a little bit shorter to kind of make room for a window. You could do a door too, but I don't think there's really enough room to do a window and a door. Uh, they wouldn't be able to be very big, but I chose to do a little window. And so I just cut those little popsicle sticks down smaller for the sides. And then I just glue those on. That's the front of my log cabin. If you have some hanging over the side, you can always trim those up with scissors too. And then for the ruler part, I thought that would make the perfect width for a roof. So I'm just gonna cut this down as well. Sometimes I forget, and that miter scissors really doesn't work great on flat woods. He might wanna use a saw for this part. But I'm squeezing it. <laughs> so I got two pieces for the roof line. I think um, I like the fact that they kind of overlap the sides. And I also like the detail where, you know, the little wood between the stickers, I'm going to leave that on top as well, just to provide a little detailed touch there and hot glue the roof on our little log cabin. Now it's time for the little Jenga blocks. I thought they would be perfect for a little chimney for our little cabin. And I picked out two of them and I'm going to cut them with my miter scissors at a 45 degree angle, to give them that slope so they can go on the roof and sit on there nicely. And they are kind of small, so I'm going to have to use two of them together to kind of get a little bit more substantial chimney to glue on our little log cabin. And then once I get them cut down, I just glue them to each other and then glue them to the roof. I'm not much of a woodworker, but I do love making wood crafts like this from the Dollar Tree. So I thought we could stain it with some Antique Wax by Waverly. And I'm doing a watered down version on this one too, but probably not as watered down as we did on the picnic table. And then we're just gonna stain all of this great wood, including the sides. And I used a brush so I could kind of get down in between the popsicle sticks. And see how that looks like a little log cabin? So cute. I'm also going to like stain, you know, the window, the roof here any of the raw wood with that kind of watered down Antique Wax by Waverly. It's looking cute, right? So now it's time for a window. I just use a white paint pen and I'm just gonna draw like some little square panels for a simple little window. Kind of do some lines on them to kind of make them look like glass. And then I used a brown paint pen, paint pen to do like a little window frame. Totally optional for this part, but I thought it needed a little bit more detail. And I just do a square and then a crisscross there in the middle. 
And this was so fun to make. What do you guys think about my little log cabin for a tear tray? Or this would be great for any kind of camping decor. This is another sign that I found at the Dollar General. I think these are great. They really reminded me of the national parks that we like to visit. So that's gonna be perfect as well. And check out these little fairy garden things. They have like little turtles, frogs, birds. I thought those would be really cute to kind of add some little touches to the tear tray as well. Look, the turtle even has a little shell. Now this is some boxwood that I have left over from another DIY that I got at the Target Dollar Spot, but you can use whatever you have. I just wanted some little pieces of greenery just to use as filler for my tear tray. So I'm just gonna pull some of that off. It's kind of the easiest way to get some of that. And that's gonna make great filler. And it's about time to put this camping and tear tray together. You guys know I love using ribbon on the side of mine. And I found this great camping trip camper ribbon at Dollar Tree. So I thought that would be perfect. So I wrapped that around my tear tray and glued that on with a dot to itself. And then we can start putting this tear tray together. We're going to decorate the bottom first. So here's our little camping scene with our little DIY canvas tent. I decided to add a little turtle to that one. And I did put a little bit of greenery in this bottom one already, but you can always add the little filler stuff later as well. Here's our little DIY barbecue grill. So cute. I always see these in the toy aisle at Dollar Tree and I was glad that I was able to make something really cute out of it. It looks so much better that color than the pink. <laughs> I like to use the bigger items here at the bottom, so I think that the picnic table is gonna work really well here. It doesn't fit all the way down in there, but that's okay, I kinda want people to see it anyway. So I kinda sit it up a little bit on the side. And there's my little DIY tree or kind of bush to provide a little greenery there. I'm gonna kinda sneak it in there behind the grill just to kinda fill up some dead space back there. And we have a little bit of room left here, so one of these tall little camping signs from Dollar General will be perfect. On to the second tier. I sprinkled in a lot of that boxwood greenery, just kind of scattering that around. And then here's our little Airstream camper that we DIY'd from that little fairy garden camper from the Dollar Tree. A little frog relaxing here at the campsite. Frogs definitely go with camping theme for me. And I love those. You guys know I made a little porch swing this spring for one of those, so cute. And our little bucket of logs was so easy to put together and very camping related. And then here is that little National Forest Campground sign. It also says cabins on there, so cute. And maybe room for another little frog over here. Here's the one that looks like he's kind of croaking. I love it so far. Now it's time for the top tier. Here's our third little frog. This one looks like he's kind of thinking maybe. You can kind of look up here at the top of the tier tray. And another one of those little camping signs. I put the little white bird on the top of that one, attached it with a little hot glue so it doesn't fall off. Looks great perched up there. And here's our little DIY log cabin. So cute, I love that. I think I like the picnic table more, but they're definitely my two favorite camping DIYs from this tier tray. And here's the other little National Forest sign from Dollar General. And here's a sneak peek of how this little camping tear tray turned out. I will give you a full tour of this during the final reveal. I'm glad I decided to add the little turtle there to the camping scene. He's so cute and I think he really takes it up a notch. It'd be great to, if you had something like circular, maybe even bottle caps to make some plates and stuff for the little picnic table as well. That'd be super cute. 
or a little DIY lantern even. But this is what it looks like from this angle. Hey guys, I wanted to let you guys know that I've introduced memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you can help support me here at Crafty Beach. You're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos like this one, and you're also gonna get a few other perks like shout outs. I wanna give a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach moms. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, and Verna Noctigal. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you so much. And now it's time for the final reveal. Be sure to comment your favorite camping DIY or camping story below. I'd love to hear it or just come say hello. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. We're almost to 20,000 subscribers. We're so close. And I will be camping this week, but don't worry, I will also be uploading more DIY videos for you. As a kid, I used to live out by a lake With lightning bolts, collecting sticks and secret handshakes I was invincible then, my heart so pure I had no fear and those were the years that I hold so dear And it felt so right having you by my side I would never waste your time on mine Do you ever think about the time Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you would like more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here.